And here we go. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to 20 Days of Healing. My name's Vicky Poole, and I'm really, really pleased to be joined today by Lawrence. Hi, Lawrence, how are you doing? I'm not too bad, Vicky, yourself? Yeah, I'm doing really well, thanks, really well. Good, good. Um, I came across Lawrence as a HR consultant and all of his ideas for, for HR and how to get all of the relevant teams involved were just absolutely mind-blowing. And when I got to know Lawrence a little bit more, I learned that there's actually so many different ways that you can think outside of the box in order to be able to support your teams. So when I was thinking about someone awesome to join this week for management tools on 20 Days of Healing, you know, Lawrence had to be on that list just because of all of his crazy out the box ideas that have delivered really significant results for not only the company, but also the people who, who work there. So, so Lawrence, how does that sound? Is that, is that a good enough introduction for you and everything that you've done? <laughs> Yeah, it, it's maybe too good. Yeah, but but yeah, yeah, it is. I think it covers it quite well, doesn't it? Brilliant. Thank you. So, I suppose from a, from a HR background, I mean, how long have you been in HR now, Lawrence? I've been in HR so roughly twenty five years plus. Wow! And I imagine that you've yeah. seen a lot of change and shift over the time there. I have. I've seen. I've seen a lot of shift in emphasis. Yeah. Um, certainly over the 25 years and in the different roles and different industries that I've worked in as well, which I think is important because different industries, whether it be public, private sector, do have different approaches to how things are done. Yeah, but but certainly massive shifts. Yeah. And I know that there's that there's been massive shifts in HR, particularly over the, like, the last 12, 18 months. And I wonder, I wonder if you can just mention some of the key elements from your experiences in HR about you know the biggest transitions that you've seen or the biggest changes that you've seen yeah i, th I think the, i think obviously we, we where we are at this moment in time with, with coronavirus and everything else then things have been um brought forward faster as well so you know i have worked in the public sector and the private sector the private sector were more open to um flexible working working at home nine day fortnights all that type of uh, 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 friendly activity where I think the public sector were almost uh, uh, still in, you know, we work in an office and we come into the office at a set time and we do set hours. Um, so that has massively changed recently. Uh, you know, I've worked on a contract to the NHS recently and we, we was at home for seven months. Now that would not have happened two, three years ago, but along with that, because people are, are changing the way they work, if they're able to, not everybody is, if they are able to, I think there's a lot more that goes on behind it as well. So how do you support people at home? How do you make sure they can work at home? Because often it's not just working at home, but it's all the family commitments of working at home, children, homeschooling. Um, so it's the support facilities, I think, that you put on the back of that that make the difference. Otherwise, it can be, it can be quite isolating for a lot of people. You know, if your only communication is via a Teams call or via a Zoom call, um, it, it can be. It can bring a lot of a, a lot of issues for various different people. Yeah, that's actually a really interesting point, Lawrence. And how from a how what 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 other, what, what are the support processes that you do put into place for something yeah, like that? I, I, how do you support I, I, them? I, I think the support processes are very similar to when you're in the office, but I think because you're working at home, you can actually do it more. So if you're doing a one-to-one, -one, you're not getting interrupted because it's over a Zoom call or it's over a Teams meeting. You're looking at someone's face and you've got that quality hour together. Whereas we all know with the greatest intentions, you try and do these things in the office and for whatever reason, you're interrupted, other things come on come into your workload and everything else. So I think in some ways it, it, it does help that, but I think I think you have to do more. So we're certainly seeing a lot of self-help videos, training courses on managing stress, identifying stress, trying to get you into a routine at home, offering other support initiatives around. So I, I think it's a combination of everything, but, um, and also, you know, being flexible when you're working at home, you know, if you've got school aged children, you need to get them to school. You don't have to work half past eight till five o'clock. Yeah, you can be flexible within that. So I think there is other support things around there. And then you've got the traditional support interventions like occupational health, well-being initiatives, which, which are all still going on. 
but again they're being done in a different manner because you can't get 10 15 people into a classroom environment yeah, right, yeah, right. Um, obviously with everything being remote i mean you mentioned it earlier with so many more people working from home now the way that they interact is different now as well and everyone knows that lockdowns had a huge impact on mental health and there are lots yeah. of companies now yeah going out and finding and training mental health first aiders and a lot of companies out there also have um, um what, what's it called a number in a phone book where you can phone up and speak to a counsellor yeah it, it, and, yeah yeah it's like a counselling helpline and, and yeah and, and what we're finding is the helplines are becoming bombarded because the helplines were often set up to deal with um how can I say this? Not to deal with the volume of calls they're getting now because people are suffering with the mental because it's not just the working at home, is it? It's the whole environment at the moment. So you've got, you know, homeschooling, you've got if you're caring for, you know, your parents, brothers, sisters, whatever it may be. And and also you're not getting that social interaction. So it's not just the work that's an issue, it's the whole environment at the moment, isn't it? It is, it is. And that's so true. It is the whole environment. And I suppose from a from an employee's perspective, they've got they've got a couple of avenues where they can reach out to. They've got their friends network. And if that's not an option for mm. them, then they've got like their family network. If that's yeah. not an option for them for what's going on, then they've got that the work network. And uh, if if those numbers are being bombarded and you know there's not the, the right levels of support or there's an overflow or there's a queue even just to be to be seen. You know, where can people go to? What's the process? Well, 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 well that's it. It's difficult. And I think that's where the managers and team leaders and supervisors really have to step up a little bit more as well. Because, you know, there's a lot of people who who are working at home without a family at home, without, um, you know, a partner at home. So their life has literally been, they can't see friends. They don't go into work into the office. So the social interaction, which is a major part of work, let's face it, um, you know, it, it's just not there at the moment. So I think there's a heck of a lot of people struggling on that side. Um, and I think really it's for the managers and the, you know, I bet certainly, you know, give people a call a couple of times a day. It only has to be five minutes. Otherwise you find you just going from one team's call to the next, the next, the next, you know, and if you are working at home, um, pick up the phone as well, talk to people. That's a really good point. I, I once heard an expression um, no one else will help you unless you help yourself and I, yes, I like that exactly. yeah because if you're feeling yeah. a bit you know um, a bit lonely or you could do with having a chat with someone just pick up the phone I like that I like that a lot cool thanks for that Lawrence yeah. okay um, one of the bits that I found really interesting from our earlier conversations was about the projects that you'd worked in in terms of being able to to support and grow and mental health understanding within within a couple of companies that you've worked at and I I thought they were really out the box and really wonderful and I think they can also offer an insight of the creativity and the support that can be generated when you when you actually do a project like that yeah yeah the, 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 there is you know mental health and well-being is a massive part of, of everyday life and working life now and you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not prescribing to, to, to be the inventor of these things at all, but there's a lot of free assistance and help out there. There's a lot of big charities that offer great support, the likes of Mind, people like that, who, who really will, you know, they'll do, they'll do a number of different things for you within the company. They can come and leaflet drop and give you basic information. They'll train your, your mental health first trainers. They'll take things further, though, you know, on how to spot when people are struggling, how to spot when people are having potential difficulties. So there's a heck of a lot out there, um, a, a lot of free stuff as well that you can get by just just having a look on the internet about you know mental health and well-being and what to look for and what type of things to put in. Um, you know, different companies have different approaches. We we had the one where it was take an hour for yourself, and in the month, um, you got the opportunity to just to take an hour off and you can do what you want. We we weren't interested in what it was. You go and have a, a chat with a friend. You can go and read a book. You can do whatever you want. Uh, just tell us when you're taking it and just just take an hour uh, just to relax more than anything and gather your thoughts as well i love that just take an hour yes. fantastic and what did what did the company notice when they had that i i, I think i think they noticed i think i think number one staff 
acknowledged that the company were trying to, you, you know, you, in the end of the day, you've still got a business to run. You've still got to produce what you're doing. You've still got to do, do, do the numbers and the objectives. But I think sometimes when staff feel that they are being thought of, um, it, they realise that the situations they're working in are a bit difficult at, the, at this moment in time. But that somebody within the business is actually taking a, a minute just to think about the staff as well in general. I think that's probably the biggest factor. I, I must admit that would have probably resonated a lot more with me for exactly yeah. those reasons yeah. when I was employee. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. we, 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 we were only giving you an hour. We weren't giving you um, huge bonuses or anything like that, but it was just that understanding. You know, the, the, we, we did a lot of mindfulness training, you know, yoga training, exercise videos. We, we just tried to do a little bit more than, than we'd normally do. And it was just in recognition of the position we're in at the moment, basically. I think that's something slightly different. And I think that's something to be commended because there are a lot of people out there who who aren't really thinking out of the box. No, I think there's a lot of people out there who were just, at the moment, they, they're almost basically just trying to survive as a business and and and, and it, the blinkered, is blinkered the right word? Maybe not, but they're just concentrating on, on that silo rather than looking at the, at the bigger population. I mean, in the end of the day, you know, most companies staff are your biggest asset, your biggest cost. You know, sickness has increased. Mental health has increased, stress has increased, anxiety issues have increased, again, depending on sectors you're working in. Um, so, so, you know, there's a lot to cope with for a lot of people at the moment. And a lot of the public sector, remember, there's been no furloughing whatsoever. They've just not furloughed staff at all. So staff have been working throughout this all the way through. So we're certainly seeing at the moment with, with some of the public sector clients that we're working with that we're getting to the end of the whole year and staff haven't even taken a holiday. So they've been dealing with all this, all the extra pressure, and, and they've still got three or four weeks holidays to take. So they've not even been having those, you know, those, those breaks that are needed even more so in this time. That's actually a really interesting point. I hadn't considered it from that perspective before, where you've got the those on those in front line, first line, who are working flat out to keep the, the country going and the country safe. So I suppose a nice, and, and this might be a spiky question, Lauren, so please yeah. feel free to divert because it wasn't something that we'd spoke about earlier. How, how is the HR in the NHS helping to support the first line or help, help it to support anyone in the medical trade, really? The, 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 they are being... Um... They are doing a lot of the normal stuff around health and well-being and you know online training and, and, and giving people just giving people that little extra support. Um, really, there's not a lot more they can do because it, it, when you're in something like the NHS, you're in HR, you're not a first line, you know, your first line are your nurses, your doctors, your, your people working in that situation. So, and don't get me wrong, they need the support of the central services, otherwise it, it couldn't function. Um, so there's a lot of emphasis put on what I'd call the first line support, the doctors, the nurses, and around the rest of it, it's very difficult because you're just expected just to just to carry on as you are. You've still got to recruit. You know, there's a lot of temporary staffing going on. There's a lot of redeployment to different areas within the organisation. You know, certain, you know, like all the dentistry side closed down, but then what they needed was more people in certain areas. So people were being very... Um, and this was all being coordinated by HR and, and the operational managers. So really, that I'm not saying HR was forgot about. It wasn't. But I think it was deemed that there was groups more in need of help than HR or, or finance or IT, if you see what the, the, where I'm coming from. Uh, no, I do. I do. Cool. Now, that, that's, that's reassuring. I, mean, I, I, I suppose it's the same with local governments as well. Local government have had to... Because a lot of local governments of the NHS work very closely together in certain areas now. So, you know, local governments are saying they, they, things can't stop. You know, your bins need collecting, your, yeah, all, all, all these things carry on, your revenues need collecting, your business rates. So, again, I think in a lot of the public sector, a lot of the people in the private sector, it's different, different concerns for different groups. A lot of people in private sector have been furloughed, um, you know. The, obviously going to be huge job cups coming up. Furlough's going to end in April. Um, 
I've certainly heard now of a lot of job cuts happening now. So people have been furloughed, they've been brought back, and rather being re furloughed, they're just making redundancies. So there's different, I suppose, there's different concerns, worries in different sectors. And that's that's the different concerns in different sectors. Um, I, I hear and I agree. And I think I think there's two elements to this. There's the you've got to look after the staff that you've got. And then as your staff are leaving or transitioning out, there are things that you can do to help them to transition out easily. And there are things that those people yeah. can do to help themselves. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. But I also think there's a lot of organisations that have used this period of a, a, bit, a bit of a reality check just to look at growth expansions and look at maybe reducing the workforce to what's needed and everything else. I think those opportunities are being taken as well now. And, and we know there's a lot of people that, you know, I've spoke to colleagues who were apparently furloughed and not supposed to be doing anything and they're doing a full working week. So, 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 so you've got the combination of everything, really. There's a particular project I'd like to go back to um, that we spoke about, and it's something that you did at the housing department. Right. Um, and I thought that your, your project there was, was really innovative. And I was wondering for our viewers who are watching this um, on replay, if you could share some of the stories there and what the goal was and how you went about to achieve it. Oh, so that was around the um, the mental health first aiders. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that, well, that, that was a big project because we had it various locations, about 150 locations um, around the country, and um, small groups of staff in each location, but then um, a, a large quantity of tenants within each location as well. So, so we also had. We were trying to look after our staff, but the welfare of some of the tenants as well. Um, and that was a huge programme to do that. So, so we rolled that out. It, it took a long time, um, but the benefits were, were huge in terms of how we did it and what we did and, and, and things like that. I mean, it, it's quite difficult to talk about specific examples in specific organisations, but um, yeah, th 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 that was a good rollout. So, so we, 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 the aim of it was to get a mental health first trainer into each location. And for their role to be to work with people who were struggling uh, to help spot the signs of people struggling and an early intervention into that um yeah and you know i i that that was a project i did at the last organization but all the signs were that it was very beneficial fantastic and that's really investing in your staff in those locations so you said it was about 150 locations across the country it, it was about 150 you... staff yeah we we we, we you know, out of an, a, a total employee count of about 600. But we have to do that because some of our sites were 30, 40 miles away from the nearest site. Um, you know, and they were all only small sets of groups in that location, yeah. But but it worked well. But again, along with that, we would we were doing other supporting things. So all these people in different locations had the opportunity to sign on to the other wellbeing events, take the, take the hour off in the month, do this, do that, and, and look at a, a range of things, really. What I'm hearing you say there is that if you do lots of little things, they mount up and uh, they contribute. Uh, 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 and lots of little things are easier to deliver than huge things. So you, you can often have a, so what we try to do is a wellbeing event each month. And it might be, it might be looking at, 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 at focusing on men one month. It might be focusing on something else. You know, we're not, we're not saying what was, sometimes it would be sending out little gift packs to, celebrate one one item other times it'd just be a newsletter we didn't do everything every month but we had a theme each month um, which is pretty standard now for well-being and mental health and all those types of different interventions where it tends to be not not huge big events because people are working at home and everything else but what you can do you know it can be in your monthly newsletter it can talk about what the focus is for this month you know, it doesn't have to be massive. It's, to me, it's not about two or three huge events in a year. It's about constant, yeah, just reminders and focusing on, on, on different things. Oh, that's brilliant. What? Yeah, I like the little and often, and I like the the vary. I like the variedness of the of the events because sometimes things will resonate with other people. 
And Absolutely. I think that's important Absolutely. to include as well. Yeah, and not not every piece of well-being is going to suit everybody that works for you, but there might be two or three things in a year that that are more, like you said, related or personal to a person. I love that, Lawrence. That's fantastic. Cool. Good, so I'm good. just conscious of time and being able to deliver on our on our brown bag lunch. So I suppose my question, my last question for you, Lawrence, is if you were to give one golden nugget away, which is something that as a HR consultant, you would suggest that everyone kind of explores to improve a person or a team's mental health or standing or happiness at a company, what would it be? I, I, I think it would be to communicate regularly with people hold or go out of your way if you know if you've not heard of someone for two or three days give them a quick call you know just make sure it's only two or three minutes you don't have to have a 20 minute half an hour conversation but i think it's just dropping in on people and just making sure things are all right and and, and also being being approachable you know because there's lots of different issues that people have at this moment in time so don't be blinkered with things you know just 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 be willing to listen to somebody I think that's really powerful, Lawrence, and thank you for sharing. And if I could add a slight, um, if I could add something ever so slightly to that, is actually be present on that yeah. phone call as well and not Absolutely. just be there and listening yes. to someone talk and typing an email, actually yeah. be there and be present and hold that yes. space for them because that way they, they are being listened to and they're actually yeah. getting that connection that they're craving. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I, I think that's probably the most important thing you can do at this moment in time. Thank you very much, Lawrence. Okay. I am. Um, I appreciate you having you here today. So thank you very much, everybody who's watching on replay. Um, my name is Vicky Poole. Uh, you can press the subscribe button below to catch all the upcoming videos that are coming for the rest of the 20 days of healing. You can follow me at Vicky Poole Coach at Twitter and Instagram. And I look forward to seeing from you and hearing from you soon. Thanks now. Take care and God bless.